This video is a case study of technology-enabled abuse, where intimate images of a woman are shared without her consent. This is also known as revenge porn. The video provides strategies to help women deal with instances of revenge porn, including how to report the material and ask for it to be taken down. It features a woman in her early 20s and a male friend. There are images of the woman in her home and with the man at a party and in the street. They are shown talking to each other as well as becoming intimate. There are some largely obscured intimate still images. The woman and the man are played by actors. When somebody shares your intimate image or video without your consent to humiliate or punish you, that is a form of online abuse. Alex and I, we went to school together. Uh, we were mates for many years. We hung out all the time and we practically knew everything about each other. One night we kissed. I didn't think much of it. It was just a fun night out that went a bit too far, I guess. I mean, I, I liked Alex, so I just didn't want to ruin our friendship and I just thought we were both on the same page. He called and texted me a couple of times that week, but that wasn't out of the norm. However, the next week, we met up again with all of our friends. My friend noticed Alex was just staring at me, but I laughed it off. It was the night after our final exams, so I did have a few drinks just to celebrate. Alex and I stupidly kissed again. We went back to his house and, well, you know, one thing led to another. I really regretted it. I knew straight away that I didn't want it to go any further. I just didn't want to date him or anything. I knew I didn't feel the same way about him. He started calling and messaging me an insane amount of times over the following weekend. I ended up calling him because his messages were just getting too weird. I told him that we needed to meet up. I told him that he was just a good friend, but we should just stay mates, you know? He didn't try to argue with me, he just looked confused and upset. That night I went out with a few friends for a girls' night and a couple of our male schoolmates were there too. So my friend Kate, she actually tagged us all in a group photo together and later that night Alex actually sent me a text message calling me a slut. He also posted photos of me from our night together. I don't even remember them being taken. I'm topless in one and completely naked in others and there's just some other ones that I don't even want to mention. I couldn't believe what he had done. All my friends and family, they saw the photos. I was hysterical and I sent him messages asking him to take everything down. I begged, but he stopped answering my calls or my messages. My friends helped me report all the images to the website and after a day or so they did get removed but you know, by then everyone had seen them. Even total strangers had commented on them and shared them around. We reported it to Google and they helped block the images in search results. It made me feel a little bit better. But then Alex posted my name and my mobile number and I started getting abusive and threatening messages from all kinds of creeps. I kept reporting them, but I also had to take screenshots and things like that just in case I decided to go to the police. I ended up blocking Alex from my mobile and every single stranger that tried to message or call me, I had to hide my caller ID. I also totally blocked Alex online, deleted him from any group and my friends made sure that everyone we knew had blocked and deleted him as well. It all stopped eventually, but it took me a really long time to stop blaming myself. I've learned that there are things that you can do to take the power away from the abuser and gain back control. Find out more at eSafety for Women. The video concludes with an end credit of the Australian Government Crest alongside the web address www.esafety.gov.au forward slash women.